CD Projekt Red just confirmed that they're working on a new IP as well as multiple new projects. They made 7 tweets in a single thread stating what each project is. The first one is Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, a major story-driven expansion to Cyberpunk 2077. They say that it's currently in the final stages of production and it's being developed by 350 plus people working at CDPR. The next is Project Sirius, an innovative take on the Witcher universe telling an unforgettable story for existing Witcher fans and new audiences. It is currently in pre-production phase and it's being developed by the Molasses Flood supported by CD Projekt Red with over 60 people plus involved. Then we have Project Polaris, a story-driven open-world RPG built on the legacy of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It's also in the pre-production phase, being developed by CDPR with over 150 plus people and they say that it is the beginning of a new Witcher trilogy, meaning that all three games will be delivered within a six-year period following the Polaris release. Then we have Project Canis Majoris, a story-driven single-player open-world RPG set within the Witcher universe. They say that it is contracted to be developed by a third-party studio led by ex-Witcher veterans. Then the pretty big one, but not the biggest one, is Project Orion, which is apparently going to be the sequel for Cyberpunk 2077, obviously being developed by CDPR. And then the really big one, in my opinion, the biggest news, is a project called Hadar. It is a completely new IP, distinct from the Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077. Now, obviously, this is a big deal because they say that it is being developed 100% internally. They make sure to say it's 100%, just just to let people know that this is the one that they're focusing on. And it's currently in the conceptual stage. Now let's be real, CDPR isn't really the best developer right now, especially after what happened with Cyberpunk 2077, but they have been making headlines for a lot of good things in regards to Cyberpunk 2077 and the way they are updating it constantly. I'll have to admit that the reception for Cyberpunk 2077 has completely shifted within the past month, especially after the biggest update they made, which is the latest one, and them selling over 20 million copies. It seems that the curse of CDPR is finally being removed, at least slowly for now. We'll have to see what Project Hadar is all about and what the sequel for Cyberpunk 2077 will be. But I'm super excited to hear more about all of these projects. Do leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what you think about these projects and do you forgive CDPR for what they have done? And as a result of that, will you trust these projects to be more polished than Cyberpunk 2077? All right, moving on. The website Insider Gaming just revealed a ton of new information regarding God of War Ragnarok, including the length of the game, the amount of factions across the nine realms, and more. The title of the article says that God of War Ragnarok is 40 hours in length. In comparison, the main story of God of War 2018 takes about 21 hours to beat. So obviously the game will be huge. I think this game will be much bigger than a lot of people anticipate. I've seen a lot of people say that this is just a DLC because the gameplay is very similar, which doesn't make any sense. A lot of sequels have similar gameplay, but sometimes they get even better and better. The report also says that around three and a half hours of the 20 hours played will be cinematic scenes with the remaining 16 and a half hours of gameplay. So that is a ton of cinematics, which in my opinion is a very good thing for a game like this. I absolutely love the cinematics in God of War 2018, and I'm sure God of War Ragnarok will have some breathtaking cinematics with Thor. The report also reminds us that two weeks ago, it was revealed that the game will be 90.6 gigabytes on PlayStation 4. It could be a little smaller on PS5 due to the hardware making games a little smaller, which is a good advantage for PS5 users. We've seen it time and time again, where games are a little less in size on PS5 compared to PS4. Now, Insider Gaming just a few hours ago also made another report called All 11 Factions in God of War Ragnarok. Now, this might be a little spoilery for some, so I recommend not looking at this if you want to go in totally blind. But this wouldn't ruin the game in my opinion. Alright, so here are all the 11 God of War Ragnarok factions. Acer, Beasts, Dwarves, Elves, Ethereal, Humans, Jotnar, Monsters, Hellwalkers, Seder, and Veneer. So if you played God of War 2018, this would sound very similar because they're pretty much almost all of them are the same, except for a few ones. All of this information just came out of nowhere, but it's good to hear more about God of War Ragnarok because we all know the game will be an absolute masterpiece when it comes out on November 8th, 2022. Let me know if you're getting the game on day one and how hyped are you for God of War Ragnarok. Alright, let's move on to the next news. If you're a fan of From Software with games like Elden Ring, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and Sekiro, well then you might be excited for a potential movie about one of these games and more likely to be a Bloodborne movie because it was reported by Video Game Chronicle that PlayStation Productions is thinking about making a movie in collaboration with From Software and as we know Bloodborne is one of the IPs that is exclusive on PlayStation. PlayStation Studio head 
Herman Holtz implied that an Elden Ring or Bloodborne film or TV series could be considered due to Sony's investment in the group. If you aren't aware, Sony recently acquired 14.09% of From Software from its parent company, Kadokawa Corporation. Now this wouldn't surprise me because just now we're getting The Last of Us HBO series along with the Twisted Metal TV show. Sony owns many properties and it would totally make sense to make a movie about a From Software game if they have the chance. I know I will watch it for sure. The final topic of the day is that we might be getting a Horizon Zero Dawn remake for PS5 along with the Horizon Zero Dawn multiplayer game which is being reported to be in development. As reported by mpfirst.com, it has been revealed to us that PlayStation is now remaking or remastering Horizon Zero Dawn, a game that is only 5 years old and had its sequel released earlier this year. They said that it will feature an improved lighting system, overhauled textures and better animations, as well as new character models to fit the sequel. I mean don't get me wrong, Horizon Zero Dawn is an absolute masterpiece, but this just doesn't make any sense. Why would they remake Horizon Zero Dawn when Horizon Zero Dawn itself still looks absolutely amazing? Till this day, if you go back and play Horizon Zero Dawn, especially after the developers updated the game to be played better on PS5, the game looks better than 90% of games released this year. I'm sorry, but this just doesn't make any sense. I don't believe it. MP First is a reliable source, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure about this one. But they also said that the remake isn't the only Horizon related project that is in the works. They said that sources told them PlayStation is currently developing a Horizon Online multiplayer game for PS5 and PC. Two sources have verified that the project is indeed real, with the third giving some brief details that it may feature a form of co-op. Now the one thing to keep in mind is that they never mentioned the source. They keep saying that two sources have verified this project, this source verified that project. But who is the source? How can we trust this? MP First is a known website and I know they wouldn't just make stuff up. I'm just curious what the sources are. But if this is true, if a remake is coming and a Horizon Online multiplayer game is in the works. I'm definitely excited for the online multiplayer game because that would be interesting and new, but the remake or a remaster, I wouldn't be interested at all. I don't even think I would play it if it was for free. Since the first game still looks great, I just don't see how they could remake it and make it look much much better to the point that you want to replay it. The game came out like 5 years ago and they updated it on PS5, like why would they remake it? That might be just something that they thought about and that's how the rumor started, one of the developers just said something about it, but in my opinion, I don't think it's happening. There could be just an idea that was scrapped. Do leave your thoughts about what you think of this. Would you get a Horizon Zero Dawn remake? And are you excited for a possible Horizon Online multiplayer game for PS5 and PC? Alright, that was all the news for today. This was another episode of the Daily Gaming Report. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, all I ask is for you to leave a like in order to support the channel. It will go a long way. Also, subscribe to the channel for your daily gaming news. And don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to never miss any future uploads. That's all for me now. I'll catch you next time.